question remains, is Cocoon worth your money and more importantly, your time? Cocoon is another title making multiple appearances in Game Awards this year as well it should. However, is it worth the $25 price tag? Let's talk about it. Cocoon's description. As follows, Cocoon takes you on an adventure across worlds within worlds. Master world-leaping mechanics, solve intricate puzzles to unravel a cosmic mystery. It's a little ambiguous, but I think that is by design. I finished Cocoon in just under six hours, and the game's description is not wrong. There is combat, but this is a puzzle game with combat and not the other way around. There's no dialogue, no explanation. No tutorial, nothing. After starting a new game, you jump right in. The way you learn how to play, it's very organic. It'll show elements of the environment around you carrying out a button or a task or solving a puzzle for you to give you kind of an example to go off of. So it's an organic way of learning how to play the game as you play the game. It, there's no pop-ups that show press A to do X. There's no pop-ups that show press A or press the trigger button to do this or that. You learn by doing, you learn by exploring yourself. That is part of the game, which is actually pretty great in my opinion. Just jump in and, and go. Let's talk about the world. Cosmic is an accurate description of Cocoon's world. Character moves through these worlds and uh, these worlds are best described as alien. After selecting a new game, you immediately jump in and you're thrust into this this universe again there's no tutorial no explanation i'll say it again but this game is beautiful if your game or title doesn't include narration dialogue characters better be beautiful it better be beautiful to look at and the audio sound design also must be top notch as you bounce between these different worlds it could be viewed as common in the gaming space so there's kind of a desert area that feels and looks rocky there's a forest area that's it's lush it's got water elements to it but it does a great job at making you feel like these worlds are unusual despite being familiar the art style and the quality of the world in the environment 10 out of 10 for me along with the visuals the audio the sound design for me is 10 out of 10 again with a game like cocoon you have no dialogue no characters no clear-cut storyline and that storyline is up for interpretation the audio visuals better be you know on their game and the audio visual better be damn near perfect the game has to wow you and wow our senses i believe cocoon does that do not play this game on mute you, you need the sound to go along with it. It's such a big part. So you, you need to play this game with sound. You need to do some immersion, you know, turn the lights off, play at home, play on the couch solo, you know, light some candles, get the mood going because it does trans transports you into, in, into this world. If you play this game without sound, you're taking such a huge wow factor away from it. There's ambient noise, the music, uh, they have wildlife in the game. So there's this element of there's living things around the worlds that you're exploring. And even the combat, you know, the music gets a little darker, builds tension. You know that you're potentially in danger. You're doing these boss fights and we'll talk about those a little bit later. The sound design is formidable. Let's talk about the storyline. We mentioned that there is no clear cut storyline. Do believe that the story is left up to interpretation. The game describes itself as a mystery and it succeeds in that sense. Right up until the credits, I knew we were solving puzzles and occasionally having to combat a big bad boss. There are several boss fights throughout the game. That's the, the majority of the combat. Not much combat in between. You're solving puzzles, boss fights, solving puzzles, boss fight. The other characters in the world were either part of the wildlife, part of the ambient settings, or some kind of sentient being that we know is not our ally. What's, what's good or what's evil? Cocoon builds up to this big finish moment. So you explore and you're solving these mysteries and solving these puzzles. You're like, okay, I think it, I know where it might be going. As far as the story goes, I'm not gonna reveal the ending, but the way the ending is, I think if you ask 100 people what they thought the ending meant or what it could lead to or, or whatever, you'd get 100 different answers. Anyone who beats the game, it comes to the end of the game, will have a different conclusion. Let's talk about the characters. The main character, the character you control, the bug, not much else to describe. You can go off the title, Cocoon, you do play a bug. There are several boss fights throughout the game, which we mentioned. Those would be considered the other characters. Outside of that, it's really just you on the solo adventure, exploring and solving, along with your thoughts, solving puzzles. The look and feel, uh, I mean, this game, in terms of colors and shapes, is a kaleidoscope. The audio design is incredible. It's a sensory overload. And the art style, the art style of the game carries it so much, and it has to. For the core mechanics, outside of the audio visual, where Cocoon really shines, the main core mechanic of the title is to move between these different colored orbs. Each orb has the special attribute within the game. For example, the red-orange orb allows you to view hidden pathways, so as long as you're carrying that orb, it illuminates. But the truly kick-ass part of this mechanic, each orb... So you need all the orbs to solve puzzles. Each orb holds a traversable world inside of it. So around the game, you'll find these pools where you can drop the orb 
and it makes a little pool of water and you can actually enter into that orb and the world that's held within. What does this mean? You're gonna have to carry those orbs inside of other orbs, worlds, I think that's right, to solve puzzles. So let's say you put the red orb down and you, but you need the green orb and you might need the purple orb to solve a puzzle inside of the red orbs world. So you would have to, and you can actually place orbs inside of other orbs to carry multiple orbs into another world. I know you guys are following this 100%. Okay, so just picture the red orb, but you can see the green orb and the purple orb inside of the red orb. So if you go into that red orb, you can actually collect those other two orbs to solve puzzles. It sounds confusing, I know. Just think Inception. It's orbs inside of orbs inside of orbs, which makes it challenging because you're gonna have to pull orbs out of worlds, drop it to create its own pool, then take those other orbs back in. And you can only carry one orb at a time. So you might feel like sometimes you're running back and forth, which could feel repetitive at times, but the puzzles are, they're challenging enough where you're gonna have to put your thinking cap on and you might even have to Google sometimes. I had to Google a couple, but they are challenging enough, but not impossible. The Think Inception, it's worlds within worlds. That said, it's a short game, so you can beat, I beat it in about six hours, uh, but you can beat it in four to six hours. Again, I'm streaming these, so I'm not just dialed in trying to solve the game as quickly as possible. There's not a difficulty setting, so you just, you either solve the puzzles in a timely manner or you don't. You'd find the full playthrough on my channel. Like I said, I beat it in just under six hours, but that includes, that includes talking to chat, taking breaks, uh, looking up some puzzles that I couldn't figure out. This might be my biggest gripe with Cocoon, and I fully understand that a game doesn't need to be long to be good. Cocoon is a great example of this, but if you're buying it at a full price, which the current price tag is $25, I was expecting something a little bit closer to like eight to 10 hours, maybe. It's a short meal. Now keep this all with a grain of salt. I'm not a puzzle game fan, so if there are puzzle games fans, fans puzzle game fans watching i don't know how long a good quality puzzle game is supposed to be maybe it's that four to six hour range because it gets repetitive after that so if there are any puzzle game fans watching this how long should a quality puzzle game be is 25 dollars a good price tag for a game that's four to six hours in general but is that a good price tag for a puzzle game? Last item for me here, quality assurance. Not much to report on. I played Cocoon on PC uh, with an Xbox controller. I didn't have any issues. No crashes, no frame drops. Yeah, no no issues playing it. No crashes, no bugs, no freezing. You don't need a keyboard for this game. I would, I would actually recommend it with a controller. Pretty basic as far as the controls and the movement go. It's the environment that you're interacting with not necessarily the character as much, just picking up orbs and moving. So there's not a jump button, there's not an action button, except to pick up the orb. The rest is using the orbs to trigger events in the environment. Well made game, great from launch, no issues beautiful to look at. Now, when I'm making these videos, I'm talking about what the price tag is, not including Game Pass or special deals. I'm trying to find the most expensive version of that title. Currently, the most expensive area I could find it was $25. So with all that in mind, with the current price at $25, is Cocoon worth your money and more importantly, your time? Time, yes, but it's worth the money if you are a fan of puzzle games. Quality of the audio visual is 10 out of 10. It's absolutely should be considered for a couple of those game of the year awards, which it is. It should for sure be on that list. The price point should feel fulfilling for fans of puzzle games. So if you were like, I love puzzle games, that's all I play. $25 won't be this crazy stretch. If you are more curious than excited to play, if you just want to experience this, hey, you know, this is something that I can knock out in one day of play time. But if you, again, if you're more curious than excited to play, I don't think $25 is the right price point for you. I would wait until it's sub 20, primarily because of the time frame it takes to beat it. If you're cruising through, you're, you're solving all the puzzles on the first try, you can you can crank this thing out in four to five hours tops. So you, you're spending $25 for you know part of a day to finish it. And then the risk would be, do you, fulfill, do you feel fulfilled? Does your wallet feel fulfilled after that $25 and that potentially one game session for you? If you love puzzle games, yes. If you are more curious, if you have Game Pass, definitely try it out. 100% play it on Game Pass. I'm not a puzzle game fan. This game was beautiful to look at. A great immersion game. I would not buy it for $25. I would wait for it to be on sale. So I think sub 20, that 15 to $20 range is a little more appropriate. It's a great title with a specific audience, but has that power to, to bring people in like myself. As always guys, this is Ghost Stories Gaming. Just look for Ghost Stories Gaming on all socials or Ghost Plays Games. I appreciate y'all's time. Leave a like, a sub, uh, a comment, a follow, whatever the actions are. Anything and everything helps as we try to grow this channel. Catch you on the next one. Peace.